Even if the bad guy's armed and you aren't, you still have a chance if your attitude, skills, and plan are up to it. Welcome to today's active self-protection lesson. I'm your host, John Correa. Today's video comes to us from a city in Russia whose name I frankly can't pronounce. After thorough testing, I recently changed my everyday OC spray to Palm Personal Defense Spray. It's nasty stuff and I recommend it highly. Little bit of info in the raw video on this one says that this guy, they have kicked out of this place. They didn't let him into a bar because he was drunk. So he goes back home and gets a shotgun. Now this guy's got a pepper spray on him because they see this guy is gonna come. And, and when they see him on the footage, the guy gets the spray out, starts hosing this guy down, and now they start fighting over his shotgun. And you see the first guy's trying to get away from, get away from him. Second guy finally steps in, and you can see the fact that the OC's had a little bit of an uh, area effect on everybody, but thankfully they are able to get that gun and get him away from that guy is facing uh, some significant charges of attempted murder and all kinds of stuff in Russia. So you can read the news story for more on that, but he did not get any shots off. They were effectively able to stop him. And that is where this one ends. Hey, those guys did a great job. If you want to get better at self-defense, one way you can do that is following our Facebook page, facebook.com slash active self-protection. Share videos, links, stories from all over the World Wide Web to help you get better as a self-defender and give you good information in your self-defense journey. Out of today's video, I want to think about some uses for pepper spray. Also want to think about the importance of empty-handed skills and about working together as a team to end the threat. Really good for these folks for paying attention to their security footage and using the security cameras to give themselves some warning. Again, being able to pay attention, incredibly important, and launching a counter ambush, incredibly important. They know this guy's coming, they know he's armed, they have an opportunity. Now, of course, do I want to fight a guy with a shotgun with an OC spray? No, I really don't. But whatever's available is what's available, and sometimes you don't have the ability to have a firearm on you. Secondly, I see this guy gives that, that OC spray a good shake. Is that a, a necessary thing? Eh, it depends on who you ask. I know that my friend John Murphy, who does a lot of OC spray training, really recommends giving that can a shake if you have the, the time to do so. Don't think it hurts anything, but not necessarily super needed in the moment, depending on what you use. Now, a couple things here. You notice he hides that OC spray behind him. I think behind the counter would have been just as useful. You know this guy's coming in with a gun. So launching the counter ambush, incredibly important, and having your space that you know what you're going to do in the moment, and having worked it out with everybody. Hey, listen, I'm going to hit him with the spray, then we have to tackle him and get this gun away from him. And having a plan worked out in advance. Advance, even crouching behind that desk, really, really useful and important when you have a few seconds in order to form a plan to be able to communicate together. Now then, he gets the OC spray out, and I want to notice a couple things about technique here. You notice that uh, he's got his index finger that he's using to activate the spray. That is not the most optimal way to use spray. Most people are not trained to use OC spray, but the correct way to do that is to wrap your fingers around the can and use your thumb as the actuator. Point your thumb and, and at the, the bad guy and use that to paint him from ear to ear and from his his brow to his chest and you want to get as much all over it as you possibly can because I mean you don't have to hose him down or anything but you want to get all the way across his face and notice that when this guy comes in and, and starts pointing the gun that it's going to take a second or two for the OC spray to take effect however it's the immediate effect of oh no something's wrong it's the startle response that really gets you something but notice as well that these guys can't stand still guy might have you know pressed the trigger he ended up not pressing the trigger and not getting any shots off but just standing there while the guy figures out if he's going to shoot you or not is not a good strategy. You better be ready to counter ambush, move, and act with authority. And I wish these guys had planned that out a little bit better, though they ended up winning, so we're going to give them a pass on that. Now, notice that he kind of goes in, gets in some more, and now starts to work on the muzzle. When you're talking about disarming someone with a long gun, I see folks all the time that, that they go, well, wait a minute, John, you never should approach somebody with a long gun or whatever. Absolutely untrue. In an active killer environment, you absolutely want to get that gun away from that guy, and it starts with averting the muzzle. Starts with the five Ds plus one of controlling the distance. Our good guy did that here. Now he's going to deflect and keep that muzzle away from him. Now dominate, distract, disarm, and disable. And when we see that, those five Ds plus one come into play, that's when we see people work. Now notice he's got the muzzle you know, uh, averted, but he is having a hard time dominating the tool because he's gone around the backside with the guy. So you got to work on that stuff on the mats. Second thing here is that you notice the second guy's kind of uncommitted. He's not sure yet if he wants to get in the fight. 
When there's an active killer, friends, the alternative is that guy is going to shoot you. So you have to have the attitude that says, I am absolutely going to get in this fight. You have to have the emotional fitness that says, I am willing to get in there with everything I have. And the spiritual fitness that says, I will not allow myself to be hurt. I will not allow others in my world to be hurt. I am ready for this to be the last day of my life, but I am not ready for it to be that way without a fight. So get in there and get after it. Now notice that they're trying to get the gun away from him. But they're having a strength fight with him because they have not done the distract. And the way that you're going to do that is with punches, with hurting people. So you got to work together as a team here. You got to get in there and say, listen, I have to work together in what my job is and what your job is. Secondly, notice that there's some effect from the OC spray. You should expect in an inside environment, if you hose somebody down, to get a little bit of the cloud effect on you. So taking an OC spray exposure, I think, is very wise to somebody who carries it. So then that way you know what it's going to do and you can fight through it. So you see him right there he's got it kind of you know he's trying to cover his eyes as well because he's not expecting to get the oc spray on him you need to be able to say listen i'm going to be okay in this instance once i have my hands on the gun we are going full tilt boogie and that guy gets a thousand times worse than i do he's more diminished than i am so my emotional fitness is strong and i can get after it now notice here that the guy in the back finally uses an elbow to get him and it's that distract that starts letting them get the gun away from him and get towards him so I can't tell you enough. Practice those five Ds plus one. Control the distance, then deflect, dominate, distract, which usually means punches, kicks, breaking things and causing pain, disarm, and then disable. That's what happens all the time in effective firearms disarms. And you have to practice those on the mat to be good at them. I mean, see, un untrained people like this do it all the time, but the more you practice it, the more you recognize, especially with long guns here when you're doing it on the mat, don't gotta do it full speed, but having some practice doing it gives you the ability to do it while not thinking about it in a deadly force encounter. Finally, let's talk about some follow-up skills. Why are these other people doing? They're just standing around watching. Can't tell you enough, friends. It's an all-hands-on-deck endeavor when we have somebody who comes in to kill us to stop them together. So I want you to, to really think about that in your own world of those who are not self-defenders in your world. Show them videos like this. Show them, hey, listen, if this ever goes down in our place of work, you have to help me because I need everybody here to help us. So let's think about launching a counter ambush using OC spray effectively even against an active killer in places where we can't carry firearms. That's very, very helpful. And let's use the tactics and skills that we have to work together as a team, communicate, use those five Ds plus one to cover our ASP.